I have written four books now um, that have all been best-selling books, debuting at uh, one, two, or, or three. I guess one of them was three, the, the Times bestseller list. But they're all really about the same thing, a, a bit of a crisis of leadership in this era. And, and again, I, I am not a person that points to heroes or villains, and not, I'm not particularly judgmental either. A lot of this is endemic. It's caused by some bad context. And presidents get caught into into very difficult cul-de-sacs in terms of, of being bold leaders in this period. And, and I write about this in a lot of books, but the, the theme really is that, is that uh, many of the people we elect president are not particularly good managers. Uh, part of what it takes to get elected president in this era is not to have too much of a track record, too much of a target to shoot at. And of course, uh, this I think applies to George W. Bush uh, it certainly applies to Barack Obama. Uh, you know, part of his charm, part of his appeal was he had so little history uh, in public affairs or much less managing anything large and consequential that will bear accountability uh, going forward. And I think this speech is something that people are responding to uh, who not just think about how the government could be better run for the benefit of all, but also who manage big companies, big organizations. A lot of CEOs use the, the 2004 book, The Price of Loyalty, which is really about the, the first real glimpse inside the Bush White House. Many of the things that we come to know about the Bush White House are from that, but Paul O'Neill, remember, the former Treasury Secretary, also the CEO of Alcoa before that, uh, was the key actor in that book, but it was about Bush and Cheney in that year. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and confidence men, Wall Street, Washington, and the Education of the President, 2011 book about Barack Obama. They're very similar, and they're used by lots of executive teams and CEOs to help people understand how we can make mistakes inside of big organizations and how often the duly chosen or elected leader uh, uh, can avoid making avoidable era, avoidable mistakes. That's the whole point. How do I um, stop myself from making avoidable errors? That's what this book is about. That's what the many books are about. How do I get the information I need? How do I get the verities that maybe are the last things I want to hear from a management team that actually mostly wants to please me? How do I avoid that? How do I reward the inconvenient truth? And that's really... Uh, something that goes to the heart of effective leadership in both the private and public sectors. How do I get to be the leader that I hope to be uh, on behalf of voters or shareholders for that matter and do it in real time and do it when needed? And it's, a, it's an issue that I deal with uh, with great specificity in stories about why presidents sometimes fail and why corporate leaders sometimes fail in ways when I talk to them much later, they look back upon with regret. Say, gosh, you know, that was avoidable. Well, that's what this speech is about. Lessons learned, often against our will.